Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be learning about a different kind of generative portrait using a method called random walk. It's called that because if you see how this work it looks like you just left a person and they're walking randomly in a huge space leaving trails of colors behind. So let's see how we can do this. The first couple steps remain the same so we load the image and store it in a variable so you can skip ahead in the video if you want. So we're just going to create a variable cat image. We're going to be loading it inside function preload. Okay, so we'll say uh, cat image equals load image and then we'll put the URL over here. Once again, we're using place kitten, but you can uh, feel free to go ahead and use an image of your own choice. And we're gonna just draw it in draw so that we can so that we know that the image has been loaded correctly. So image cat image um, zero comma zero. Ah, in preload we forgot to say equal to, and we have a spelling mistake. Okay, there we have it. So now we can go ahead and comment this out, because what we're going to do is. The first step is we're going to see how we can create a random walk. How can we create a random walker with no color, nothing. And then next we're going to be using the uh, information of the image to add color to the random walk. Okay, so let's start with the random walker. How we do that is we pick a starting point in the canvas and then randomly walk around by picking points that are close to it. So. I've just commented the image to start creating that. So let's create a couple new variables also called x, y, x1 and y1. These values will be used to define the points in between which we draw the line. We can think of these two variables x, y as the starting points. So let's go ahead and initialize them to the center of the canvas. So x can be width by 2 and y can be height by 2. Okay. So inside draw, we want to draw a random line each time it comes inside this loop. So for the first time, our starting point x and y has already been decided and given values. And we want x1 and y1 to be somewhat close to x and y. We don't want x and y to be here and x1 and y1 to be all the way in the corner. So what we'll say is we'll say x1 is equal to x plus random minus 10 comma 10. So this will give us a random value between minus 10 and 10 and once we add that to x we'll get a x value that's close to the starting point. Similarly we can do the same for y, we'll say y1 equals y plus random minus 10 comma 10. Okay. And then we'll draw a line between these two points, we'll draw a line between x comma y and x1 comma y1. Now once we draw the line, let's make x1 and y1 our new starting point so that the next time it comes back into the draw loop, the calculation is done from this point. So we'll say x equals x1 and y equals y1. So when it comes back in the draw loop like this over here now, the new values x1 and y1 will be calculated from this new point. Okay, so let's hit play and see what happens. Ah, so we can see the new lines being created, but unfortunately, because background is in draw, we can see it only once. So let's move to setup. So there we have it. We have a random walker that's been created. However, the problem with this is sometimes this can actually leave the boundaries of the canvas. And once it leaves the boundaries of the canvas, it's of no use to us. So as you can see, it's left in quite a few places here. So what we have to do is we have to add a condition that if it leaves the boundary of the canvas, it should start again somewhere randomly in the center. So what that means is if this X and Y are greater than the width and the height or less than zero, then get new X and Y's that are within the boundaries of the canvas. Okay. So to do that, we can say if x is less than 0 or x is greater than width. So if any of these conditions are satisfied, we want it to reset, which is why we're using or. 
so if or if y is less than 0 or if y is greater than height then we will reset both x and y to some random value in the canvas so x will become random 0 comma width and y will become random 0 comma height so let's just tidy this code so it looks neat. So go to edit and tidy code. Okay, so now let's see what happens. And once it leaves, it started randomly over there and now it's starting randomly over here. So our random walker is working. Perfect. Now what we want to do is step number two, which is actually get the color of the image onto this. Now remember we're using lines, so fill doesn't matter, it's stroke that matters. So first let's create a variable color. And before we draw the line over here, we'll say color equals cat image dot get x comma y. It doesn't matter if we use x comma y or x1 comma y1 because they're pretty close. So I'm just using x comma y. And then we'll make stroke of color. We can even make the line a little thicker if we want. We can say stroke weight is maybe 2. And there, we can see the image appearing. So let's make the background white. You can even make the background black if you sort of wanted to uh, have this more surprising effect. And lastly, what we can do is we can wrap this entire thing in a for loop like we did in the previous video. And what we can do, and lastly, what we can do is we can wrap the entire thing in a for loop so that it runs faster. So we'll just run a counter from, so we'll just run a counter from zero to 10 and wrap everything that's inside the draw loop inside this for loop also. So that you can see it appearing faster now and soon we'll have the entire image to look at so what's beautiful about these generative portraits is not just the image that you get in the end but also the process that you take to get oh but is also the process that you take to get to the image because typically a portrait means just sort of standing in front of a camera and shooting a picture but this way it's creating the portrait as we go along and because of the different kind of codes that we can use, it's always different each time, how it appears. So because the random walker is also different, the parts of the image that appear each time will be different. So go ahead and play with this and have fun while you're working with it. Thank you and see you in the next video.